of the Siberian Force, Mikhail Shimnikov. As you can see, he wears that beret. This man is the equivalent of the Green Beret, a soldier, a man that has stood for his country, and we let's give him a round of applause because we love our military. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the 10 athletes who will be fighting for the title. Let's give them a round of applause. Right now, we're going to let them head backstage to get warmed up for this first event. Getting their shoulders in front of the bar and their, or their knees in front of the bar. And when that happens, it's very difficult to pull back. It's not like a clean where you would need your shoulders in front of the bar and then you can, or a snatch where you need your shoulders in front of the bar to allow your, your posterior chain levers to get the bar accelerated. With a deadlift, you want to sit back. Again, this isn't just power, this is strength. The Siberian force, Mikhail Shivlikov is up next. 950 pounds for his first attempt, 400. 31 kilos. This is quite a start for him. But we've seen in the past, he has the heart of a lion. The winner of the Zukov medal. And no problem for Shivlikov. 950 in the books for him in his opening lift. One more look at that one. So notice how he dips his hips and that gives him some dynamic, gives him a little bit of dynamic force. Instead of pulling on, the, allowing the bar to roll back onto him, with this much flex you really can't do that. So he puts some dynamic opening movement on it by flexing his hips down. Hathor does the same thing. I can tell you personally, when you do that, when you sit down on the bar, you can feel your posterior chain, particularly your hamstrings, tighten up just a little bit, and it gives you a little bit of spring. Now, we could, we, we're, we're in opening attempts. So what happens, these guys are very calmly coming out, trying to make sure that they can have... One of the more animated athletes in the field, he does not hold back after that lift. And now Mikhail Shivlikov, second attempt for him, 974 pounds looking to tie Jerry Pritchett for the lead, but Pritchett has yet to lift in this second round. His first lift looked really, really good, so this should be a solid lift for him. But again, there's the way the lifts look and then the way the, the, the lifts feel, so uh, it's hard to tell what's going through an athlete's head when they're getting into their second and third attempts. Served in the Russian Navy as a Marine sailor, that's why he Where's that beret? Third overall last year of the 2018 Arnold Strongman Classic and just his second career appearance. I think one of the things that always jump out about me with this athlete is he really commits himself. He is committed to making this lift. This lift to tie Jerry Pritchett for the lead at 974 pounds. And Shivlikov with the blood running from his nose. That is common for him. He has that problem a lot. He is okay, but that lift will count 974 pounds. Solid off the, off the bottom. Controls that flex. Gets it to his knees and has to shake it a little bit to get it back. And then the and the blood coming out of his nose. He did that last year. Like I said, he really commits. He does, that doesn't bother him. And Kyle Shivlikov making sure that the maintenance crew stays busy. They're cleaning the barbell once again. Now Mikhail Shivlikov will come up next. 1,005 pounds for Shivlikov. He's looking to finish inside the top three in this opening event and set himself up nicely for the rest of the competition. 
total commitment. He will continue to pull, but there's nothing left. And Shivlikov cannot get 1,005 to go. The Siberian force thanking the crowd. That's showing how that mythic 1,000 pound club. That number has got to get in your head, too. Once you put four digits and you know that as a competitor, that's got to get in, in, inside your brain a little bit. He had, a, he had a good he had a good start on that he didn't he didn't over pull the bar he started a little bit quick more quickly than he's been he wasn't as patient on that but he was trying to get a little more gas Mikhail Shivlikov is up next looking to move up the overall leaderboard That's a that's just a little bit of pine tar on that towel. It's not pine tar directly applied. Really, it's more of a drying agent. It just gives uh, that smooth stone some a little bit of a uh, little bit of stick to the forearm and somewhat to the hands. I'll be interested to see how he picks this stone again. No one's actually turned it sideways that 90 degree sideways where it's wider. And that keeps the stone further down on your chest and that actually allows you to breathe instead of having the stone straight up and down. Shivlikov is up next. We will have all the scores at the end of the event as it, it is taking time for them to calculate everything exactly. There he goes. Every he foot, stand. every inch matters in this event. He stands the stone up. Very efficient lift, very nicely done. Locking the fingers. That's another approach. And Shivlikov is off on his first lap. 101 feet every trip around this track. Moving his feet quickly. Hopefully he can hang on to his fingers. He is breathing well. He's got one lap down. He's slowing. And the grip goes right there. Shivlikov cannot catch the other men that we saw go before him. It's just so tempting to want to pick that stone up and lock your fingers. You would think that that would give him a better grip, but it seemed that his grip failed more quickly than the other athletes. I would agree, Sean. Now watch, he's, notice how he had it, had it right between his feet, swung the stone back and it shot right into his lap, very efficient. Now he locks his fingers and what that does, it puts the stone even higher up on his chest. And see his hands are starting to start, his hands are starting to slip. He is breathing well, but his feet slow down. The stone's up on his chest. There you go. Now he doesn't have he doesn't have an option once his fingers slip apart. And your fingers will stick to the stone more effectively than they'll stick to each other, unless they're locked. He's been impressive so far. This is the third of five events in the most prestigious strongman competition in the world. You mentioned this yesterday. I mean, this event defines strongman. Yes, it does. What happens with the Arnold is that, okay, no matter what happens with other uh, television shows and strongman competitions, this is the one that gives you street cred because it is the heaviest. It is, it is the one that has the most dominating it has the one that has the uh, most dominating uh, forces in strongman coming to bear here because they have implements and ropes behind all these implements. This is where we stand so far as Alexei Novikov just set the mark to beat at 113 feet. And now, Mikhail Shivlikov, who is a man who went with that similar technique that Novikov used on Thursday night, but choosing to change things up a little bit here at the start. So he started. He started with his hands out, now he's put his hands in. He's just got his shoulders a little bit closer. But he has an indomitable will. He's going he's gonna to keep pushing here in a moment. And now taking a, a break and getting that thing moving again. There's no momentum advantage here. That, that sand starts to move and friction starts to take hold. And now going with a similar technique to Novikov. Even pushing his hands off of his thighs. 
Williams using his whole body. He's past Pritchett. Five seconds to go. Oh, it looks like he might be close to third. We'll have to wait for the official score, but he does not get the Machas Belshox nameplate, who now sits in second place. But Mikhail Shimlikov, the Siberian force, applying some pretty impressive force to the wheel of pain, 103 feet. He's got his hands against the implement. Really a close hand placement, so he's not putting strain on his shoulders. And then he goes to that technique that Novikov brought out for us. And now he's pushing his hands against his thighs. But it's all about leverage. Getting low and continuing to push. Even when he stopped, he went right back to it. So he embraced that pain and kept going. Brian Shaw will be up next as they are going according. So getting a repetition with this implement then puts you ahead of all others who do not and have to go to the lighter implement. Come on, Shilvikov. Shilvikov trying to get himself fired up. The Siberian ready. force getting set to take stop. on the Austrian Oak. All ready for the man in the black parade from the Russian Special Forces, Mikhail Shilvikov. He's coming up to check, waiting for the whistle. Shivakov making sure everything is in position, now, position in which he would like it. Here we go. Don't you hear Mikhail that Shivakov. 90 seconds. The mark to me. We'll have 90 Davis seconds. Between as many repetitions as possible. Getting the crowd behind him. Check with Magnus Mervagnus in the head judge. And now Mikhail Shivakov on attempt number one. Whistles on. All right. He goes. Pitching to the chest. And the press is good as Magnus Ravagnuson gives him the signal. One down from Kyle Shildakov, now the third man to be able to lift that over his head. He's going to take his time, reset just a bit. Notice how most of these lifters, these strongmen are using uh, lifting shoes with that heel on them. And the reason for that is when you push back with that implement, it allows you to lean back onto your heels and, and maintain that position. Plus, it's a much more solid base to work from. And that may not seem like a lot, but when you're dealing with something this heavy, I mean, just millimeters in positioning can make a difference. Yes, and that's that's exactly it. It's that, uh, those, those tiny little details that make or break attempts at this level. Second attempt for Mikhail Shivlikov. Look at the match. He gets this, he would tie for the lead. And that is good for the Siberian force, and he has tied me with Mateusz Kieluszkowski, pardon me, for the lead. Kieluszkowski earlier with two complete repetitions. And Mikhail Shivlikov will complete two as well. Great performance from the Siberian force. Gets it efficiently up, rolling it back. His elbows are forward, pushes back. He's got to hold it. Notice his elbows are forward, pushing back over his face. It goes a little bit behind your head, but again, we're talking about the details of being able to lock it out. Something about those shoes as well.